we often think of um, people with dementia as in negative terms. And that leads to negative outcomes. And it, we have to start understanding that. So if we see a person who has the ability to walk and come up and ask a question, even if the question is, have you seen my mom? But if that person's walking down the hall and they're asking for something and they're picking objects up, oftentimes that person is labeled in a negative way. They're labeled as a wanderer or a rummager or confused, or worse yet, they're labeled as a problem. Instead, this person, is sh this person is showing us all that they can still do. And it's the reframing that that becomes so essential to unlocking the functional and quality of life potential inside of each of these individuals with Alzheimer's. So instead of seeing that person as a confused wanderer who rummages, that person can still walk. That person desires to get up and engage with the environment and someone. That's a strength. That's something we can work with and we want to help build up. That person can use their hands. That person can say a few words. All of those abilities were still there, it, but it was our perspective that framed them in an either negative way or a positive way. And when you think about that very important part of perspective, it's everything. It's everything. Because if we see that person in a negative way, we're going to get negative outcomes. Because what would probably come from seeing them as a wandering rummager is maybe a medication to slow them down. A negative response, like, sit down, Millie! And then that little soul inside begins to wither. The person who wanted to engage with me now is scared to do so. And probably that accelerated the whole request to get home. <laughs> the request that we hear from people with Alzheimer's, have you seen my mom? How do I get home? All we gotta do is stop and think about what's the emotion behind that? My gosh. So that that perspective of negative labels, people with dementia can't do anything anymore, has led to these people wanting to escape. Escape to a place in which they feel welcome just as they are today. You know, I walked into a, um, a community once, a nursing home, pretty good one. It's not the point, but there was a, a new admission, a resident with Alzheimer's who was sitting in the dining room. And a lot of people who have worked in nursing homes they probably have seen somebody just like her before. She was sitting at the dining room table screaming, Help! Help! How do I get out of here? And I was a consultant in the building and I walked up and I responded to that and I said to one of the team members, What's wrong with this lady over here? Oh, that's nothing. She always does that. The more that this lady verbalized that request for help, the more the staff scattered because they didn't know what to do with her and she was just beginning to become a problem. So finally I noticed that she kept saying, I want to get to the second floor, help! I want to get to the second floor. So I approached her and I said, hi, my name is Kim, how are you today? And I held her hand and she held mine. Leave me alone! So I thought, okay, well, I need to work a little harder to gain her respect and trust. So I stayed there a couple moments. Finally, she started calming down. And I asked the obvious question. What are you looking for? Because she kept saying she wanted to get to the second floor. I said, what are you looking for? And she said something I will never forget. She said, I'm looking for my friends and myself. Just think about that. Can you imagine the depth of that woman's loneliness and fear? She's sitting in this place in which she feels so lost and so alone, she's looking for her friends 
and herself because she feels so disconnected from who she is. I can't imagine that feeling. I can't imagine there being anything worse. So when I think about helping making life a better place for people with Alzheimer's, my first thought is making sure that every one of those individuals feels alive and loved, number one. When they're looking for their mother, they're looking for that love and acceptance and that comfort and safety that mom offers for most of us. When they're looking for home, they're not looking for the bricks and the mortar. Don't confuse that. They're not looking for that. They're looking for what home represents. A place where there's love, comfort, familiarity, purpose. We can create that for these people at every stage of dementia. It is possible. We have done it. And they deserve it. We have to move mountains to make sure that that happens for these individuals. We've got to stop making excuses. It's not too many tomorrows, then it may be us. And more than likely, we all probably have someone in our life who has Alzheimer's or related dementia. I'm, um, it's my mission, it's my ministry to make sure that when somebody has Alzheimer's, that dignity, that respect, that purpose in life, that safety, that love is not taken away. So I really ask all of us to think about what can we do to first and foremost prioritize that emotional quality of life and well-being. And along with that is that whole concept of purpose. We have to have people doing things and engaging in things that give them a sense of satisfaction and success, joy, and a reason to swing their legs over the edge of the bed in the morning and get up. And just again, because somebody has Alzheimer's doesn't mean that that has to be taken away. We take it away from them because we have that belief that because their brain is not functioning in the, the way it used to, they don't remember as well or they don't learn as well or they don't attend as well, that they can't do the things they always did. That's not true. Just like we simplify activities in life for children so they can feel success and build self-esteem and be engaged, this is what we need to do for those with Alzheimer's and dementia. I can't heal their brain, but I can heal their soul. I can give them a reason to get up tomorrow. And the way I do that is by changing something about myself first, which is my belief and perspective about what the potential is for these individuals and what's important. I change my style of communication so I know that we're understanding each other. I have to change that. I make sure I don't do anything, anything, until I have this person's trust and agreement. I don't force anything on them. I don't make them comply. I learn what's important to them. So I change me. I change the environment around them so that they can be successful and I change whatever their beloved activity is so it's at the just right match. Whatever skills they still have remaining, they can use. Whatever they can't do anymore, that's okay, I'll do it. Just like a two-year-old can go through their morning care routine, make a mess, do half of it, but walk away feeling great, the same is true for somebody with Alzheimer's. That's my mission help their soul to heal, give them a, live, a reason to live, make sure they feel like they're never alone.